And good morning, everybody. Welcome to Casual Coffee with Ken. My name is Ken, and it's Friday. We made it. It's the end of the week, finally. I hope you're doing well. I hope you're you're safe and you're healthy and uh, that you're planning to do something fun and relaxing to recharge your batteries this weekend. So uh, welcome to the show. Uh, this is Ken in the Kitchen. And the whole premise of the show is me teaching myself how to cook. I, uh, I just have never really bothered to learn out of sheer laziness on my part. And because Karina, my wife, makes amazing food. And why would I want to not eat amazing food? Um, so the deal has been that she does all the cooking and I am her sous chef and, uh, and I do all the cleaning. So, uh, and that's worked very well, but lately I have really felt the need to, to just <clears throat> step up my game and I want to be able to cook nice meals for her because she has done that for me for over 15 years now. And I'm very, very very grateful to her for that. So I'm I'm really happy to be in the kitchen fumbling my way through all this. Welcome. If you're new here, do me a favor. Uh, I can see your comments in my monitor. So say hi and let me know where in the world you might be watching from because it's one of the advantages and one of the allures. Allures? That's not how you say that. It's benefits. It's alluring. I don't know. It's Friday. I'm tired. <laughs> um, it's one of the things I like about live streaming rather than just doing a pre-recorded video is being able to talk to you as you're watching this. Uh, so yeah, that would be great. And uh, today, okay, today I'm really excited because I was originally going to do this recipe Wednesday, <clears throat> but I had to order some ingredients and I was waiting for them to arrive. Fortunately, they all arrived yesterday. So now I get to do this. And the name of the dish I'm going to attempt for the first time ever right here in front of you guys is called Okonomiyaki. It's otherwise known as a, a Japanese savory pancake. And it looks amazing. I uh, There's all kinds of recipes for this online. I came across this concept. We watch a lot of uh, vlogs about Japan on YouTube, and one of our favorite YouTubers is uh, a girl named Sharla who goes by the name Charmeleon on YouTube. That's her YouTube channel name. I guess that has something to do with maybe Pokemon? I don't know. Uh, but she, uh, she makes some really interesting videos, and lately with the quarantine she's been doing a lot more home-based videos, and a lot of them involve food. And this particular uh, Japanese savory pancake looked really good to me. And I'm a big fan of those, uh, that flavor profile anyway. So I was really eager to, uh, sorry, I'm filling with my tea. Uh, I was really eager to try this. I, I think it's going to be a lot of fun and going to be very tasty when all is said and done here. So yeah, uh, that's what's in store for today. So um, there's not a lot to this. It's actually a fairly simple recipe. And I try to keep them simple because maybe you're like me and you're new to the world of cooking and you want to, to challenge yourself and, and maybe teach yourself how to cook. And so you can learn right along with me. Uh, it's kind of the idea behind me doing this. So let's go uh, ahead and go over to the prep uh, camera and we'll, we'll see what we're working with today. And as you uh, might notice, there's a lot. Um, and it's not particularly well organized, is it? <laughs> That's okay. So we have a lot, to, a lot of fun ingredients to use here. I'm really looking forward to this. So we have the thing that makes this all possible. And Sharla in her video said you could substitute maybe something like barbecue sauce, but it's really not going to be the same thing at all. And you're going to want Okanami sauce. 
this is crucial to making uh, okonomiyaki because of this particular flavor profile. It is unlike anything I've ever tasted. It's wonderful. It's, uh, it's sweet and savory, but it's not overly sweet like barbecue sauces. Um, it's, you just, you want to get this. And I ordered this off Amazon. She actually, uh, Charlotte posted links to all this stuff, and I guess I should do that too. I'll go back and adjust the uh, description with links to everything I ordered. Uh, but yeah, this is, uh, this is the stuff right here. It's really good. Um, so we're going to be using that. Uh, another crucial component, uh, and again, you can order it online, is the Kewpie mayonnaise. This is Japanese mayo. And it is the perfect blend between Miracle Whip and mayo. It really does taste like the perfect combination of both of those things. And so you're really going to enjoy it, I think. Uh, I like pickled things. And um, an optional ingredient that's not in a lot of uh, other recipes for okonomiyaki, but that Charla used and I chose to emulate her in, is uh, pickled ginger. Really, I like ginger, and I like all things that are pickled. And so I'm, I'm looking forward to that. I think it's going to be good. And then uh, dashi powder is uh, another ingredient that really you cannot leave out of this. It gives, it gives a distinct flavor uh, that's unlike anything else that you could try to substitute for it. If you try to substitute like uh, chicken bouillon or beef bouillon or anything like that, it's just not going to be the same. Uh, so dashi powder is is important. Not a lot of substitutions is what I'm trying to get across here, the, unless you want something that's not ultimately the dish. Sesame oil, of course, is a favorite for all sorts of uh, Asian recipes. And then you've got, uh, and these are optional too. Charlotte uses them, but you don't find them in traditional okonomiyaki recipes. Garlic powder and then uh, onion powder as well. And then uh, there's another ingredient that you can use, and I didn't write it down because I'm not using it, um, that Charlotte uses, but in place of that other ingredient, which is kind of like flaxseed, uh, you can use two eggs. So that's what I chose to do because I like eggs. I like eggs a lot. And then uh, we're also using green onion, and you want to chop it up and separate it out so that you've got the, gr the, uh, the whites of the green onion separate from the green uh, bits of the green onion because these are going to go on the dish afterwards as garnish and these actually get cooked into the the mix that we're going to create and then the basis for all of this that forms the pancake quote unquote is cabbage and you're just going to take half a head of cabbage and uh, so for binders, you're basically using the eggs and then there's some flour here too. Uh, all of this is going to come together to make a really, really tasty, tasty dish. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. I think you're going to be very surprised and pleased with it. Uh, oops, good morning. Oops, good morning, Sean. Good to see you out there. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started. So first off, uh, I'm going to need, there's so much stuff here, I'm trying to get all this in the, the camera view for you is interesting because it's a small countertop that I have here. But uh, so I'm just going to uh, quarter my half a cabbage. And the way Sharla did this on her channel is she just chopped it up. But since we have a, a uh, food processor with uh, the, the proper blade attachment for chopping up things like the cabbage, that's what I'm going to use. So uh, let's see if I can get this in there. Yep, that just fits, I think. 
So let's see if I cut this right. I, there we go. Oh, man, that's satisfying. It is so fun to, I mean, you'll see it in a second after it's done. I mean, talk about a time saver. If you have the food processor, definitely pull out your, uh, your blade for this. Because just like that, <clears throat> we are just tearing through the cabinet. Okay, that's, <laughs> that's a little too big. This is fun. I like this. I like gadgets anyway, so anytime I get to use a kitchen gadget, I am happy. And as you might expect, this is definitely quicker than chopping it by hand. This is a lot of cabbage. I'm not even going to use all of this today in this recipe. Beautiful. Fantastic. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Okay. Put this in the sink here. I'll go ahead and unplug it just so nothing bad happens. And then uh, lift the chopping blade out. This thing is wonderful and very sharp. Please be careful if you have a food processor and are doing this, but look at that. Look at all this shredded cabbage, just that, that quick. Love it. Okay, so got this now. I can just set this off to the side, and we don't need the food processor anymore. So we've got that. Now we've got to, actually, we have to wash this. It's always good to wash your, your veg. So for this, instead of washing it by hand, I am just going to uh, put it in the bowl of my salad spinner and uh, just kind of rinse it. So. While I'm doing that, I'll just talk to you guys. Hope everybody's doing okay. Uh, what are your plans for this weekend? Are you doing anything fun? Are you, gonna, are you gonna go anywhere? I mean, I know a lot of states are starting to reopen and, and do some fun things. And I know the casinos here in Nevada have finally reopened. And, Whether that's going to actually be a good idea or not remains to be seen, quite honestly. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. We'll see what happens. We have just been enjoying being at home. Karina and I are pretty much homebodies anyway, so. Okay, so that's pretty well rinsed at this point. So I'm going to go ahead and dump it back in the bowl. And then we just put the lid on. And then Ken has to remember how to work. There we go, salad spinner. Love this thing. <laughs> I love the break too. <laughs> ah, this is this is so satisfying. Ah, I love it. I love technology. I love gadgets. Look at this. This is like when you're a kid and you're watching the laundry go round and round in the dryer. I mean, if they had the old school washers there that were front loaders, you could wash watch the wash cycle, but it was the dryer cycle that was always the most fun to watch. <laughs> okay, cool. 
think that's probably plenty dry at this point. Oh yeah, wow. Look at that. Look at how much liquid is left in there. Let, let me take it for another spin. That's so impressive to me. Let me, uh, let me just, cause you want it to be, you don't really, you really don't want this to be wet when it goes in the frying pan. It's almost hypnotic. I love it. Okay. Yep, managed to get just a little bit more liquid out of there. I think that's, we'll call that good. So I'm going to go ahead and set this off to the side for now. Because now we have to start combining uh, the other ingredients into the bowl that I've set aside for this purpose here. What do we got here? So we need how many cups of flour? Just one cup of all-purpose flour. And I need a knife to scrape that off. Okay, so in we go, one cup flour. What's next here? Uh, so we need the whites of the green onions. And this was two green onions that uh, chopped up. So put that in there. Uh, and then two eggs, so go ahead and crack the egg, there's one egg, yeah, and two eggs, okay, there we go. What else we got here? So we've got the eggs, onion, sesame oil. Okay, and that's going to be a half teaspoon of the sesame oil. And remember, Ken, oil comes out fast. Yeah, okay. Good, half a teaspoon of sesame oil. And then this is, again, the ingredients that are just optional. Charlie uses them and I like them, so I'm using them too. She calls for a sprinkle of the garlic powder. So there we go, sprinkle. I don't know what a sprinkle is. And then a sprinkle of onion powder. And if you like garlic and onion, then you can go a little heavy with your sprinkles should you choose to. All right, we're done with the flour. I can close that up now. Move that out of the way for us. Let's see here, what else do we got? And then, uh, the dashi powder, one teaspoon. Where'd the teaspoon go? Did I not have a teaspoon out here? No, I didn't. Here we go. One teaspoon ta -da, of the dashi powder. And the dashi uh, powder just comes in these little packets, which are nice. So 
So I'll go ahead and do one teaspoon of dashi powder. I've never made anything like this before. If you watch the show, you know I tried making regular old pancakes a few weeks ago. <laughs> that was uh, that was a thing. Actually, it tasted really good though. All right, so one teaspoon of dashi powder, and the dashi powder basically gives it uh, its saltiness. That's really what uh, what you want the dashi powder there for. And then, um, last but not least, we're going to go with one cup of water. And then just whisk it all together. And you're essentially trying to make a pancake batter. So since this is really only the second or third time I've ever made a pancake batter in my life, we'll see how, uh, how this goes. But that's the consistency you are apparently looking for. Not sure why it's so dark over here all of a sudden. It's weird. There we go. So I guess it's kind of ribbony is what you're going for. Chefs and bakers must have amazing forearms. So I think, nah, lighting. I think this is pretty good, maybe. It looks kind of pancake batter like to me. All right, so once we've done that, all right, this is where we add in cabbage now. So I'll remove this just for a second here. We'll put in the cabbage. It doesn't seem like a lot of batter, does it? Seems like a lot more cabbage. Seems like there's too much cabbage and not enough batter, but this is how the recipe goes. So that's what I'm doing. I think my problem, and I'm coming to realize this right now is that this bowl is not big enough to mix all of the stuff. Good morning, Syria de Flora. We do. Good for you. I don't know what you do, but I'm glad you do it. Uh, let's see here. Let's, uh... Let's get the bowl that I really needed for this in the first place. Uh, <laughs> if I had thought about it for two seconds, I would have probably realized that on my own. But we need a big bowl to combine all this. Because, yeah, there's no way. Like making, it's like a cross between a cabbage and coleslaw, isn't it? Which is funny. Okay, so I'm going to use a spatula to get the rest of this stuff out. Okay, and you can... <clears throat> Fold it all together uh, with a spatula, or you can just get in there with your hands, which is what I'm going to do after I wash them, because it doesn't hurt to wash and rewash your hands when you're cooking. See, that's what you want to do anyway. You want to have impeccably. Oh. <laughs> The cooks must have amazing forearms, you said earlier, and you said we do. Yes, I, I, I fully, yeah, I, I am in awe of uh, the forearms that uh, that people 
who bake regularly and cook regularly must have. I just said I was going to use my hands, didn't I? And now I'm just using the spatula because I'm all over the place today. That's how I am. Um, total noob in the kitchen and just trying to <laughs> figure this all out. This actually works pretty well. And it's probably leaving more of the <clears throat> quote unquote pancake batter on the cabbage. Uh, then if I was using my hands, I think more of it would have stuck to my hands. That's how I'm going to justify it anyway. <laughs> it smells really good in here. And I know that's the, uh, it's really the sesame oil at this point, because I haven't done much else. And the onion powder and garlic powder, of course. And then, um, like I said at the beginning of the show, I do like pickled ginger. But... And here's what I learned just today is that it smells really good. This is really salty. It tastes a lot less pickly and a lot more salty than I thought. So I'm going to be really sparing with this, even though I do like pickled ginger. I think with the dashi, as salty as the dashi is, if I added too much of the pickled ginger, it would be inedible. It would just be too salty to, uh, to eat. So I've got that in there. Oh man, and if you've, got, if you've got a cut on your hand that you didn't know was there, um, yeah, ow, that's pickled. <laughs> All right, so we've got that. Now what are we going to do? Um, and we'll just mix it in just a little bit more to make sure the pickled ginger gets distributed. That's a huge piece of lettuce, uh, cabbage that didn't get chopped in the chopper. So the chopper isn't foolproof. That's okay. Still faster and easier and more fun to use than just chopping with a knife by hand. Okay, that looks good to me. Mm. Okay, so now, what am I gonna do? I've got to heat my pan. So let's come over here, and it says to heat it over medium heat. Our stove, for whatever reason, runs really hot. So I'm gonna go a little bit lower than the medium, just because ours is crazy hot for whatever reason. So there are lots of recipes that you can find for this all over the place. Uh, again, I got this one from Sharla. Uh, her YouTube channel is uh, called Charmeleon. She is a, a vlogger who lives in Japan. She's also lived in Korea. She does really interesting videos on life in Japan. And lately with the quarantine, she's been doing a lot more videos from home. And this was a dish she made just this uh, week. Uh, and I went, wow, I want this because it, it has all the type of savory Asian flavors that I really enjoy. Um, check out her channel. I've linked to it in the description below. Another really good uh, Japan blogger is Chris Broad, and his uh, channel name is Abroad in Japan. Just really fun. A lot of, a lot of good stuff over there on both those channels. But uh, you can find uh, recipes for okonomiyaki all over the place. All right, so now... Karina said that I should test whether or not the pan is heated enough by putting a drop of water on there. Nope. <laughs> that would be no. So, okay. We'll wait. So, if, you're, if you've been cooking for a while, how do you manage getting everything to come together at the exact right time? I mean, I have watched people do it. I've watched my parents do it growing up. They just, and we're talking, you know, the big dinners, Thanksgiving, Christmas. I do not understand how they managed to get it all to come together because just making breakfast, when I try to make breakfast, getting 
the toast to come out at the same time that the eggs are ready so you don't get cold eggs and toast. I, that, that's a struggle for me. Uh, and I know that's lame, but I am really bad in the kitchen. Uh, <laughs> I just, how do you do it? How do you... Timing and practice, really. Yeah, okay. <sighs> Spoiled by video games. I want cheat codes. <laughs> and there are no cheat codes in life. That should be a t-shirt, right? There are no cheat codes in life. <laughs> 50 years of trial and error. Yeah. I hear you. Uh oh, it looks like... Looks like the water that I put in there is starting to sizzle, so that means my pan is getting warm, which is good. So now, Krina told me to go ahead and add my Pam, because we like Pam and we use a lot of it in this house. All right, so now here comes a moment of truth. I'm going to add half. <laughs> that would be a good shirt. No cheat codes in life. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to add half of the cabbage mixture, and I think... Uh, what am I going to do here? All right. Let's see if I can make this work. The trick is getting it in the pan without having the whole thing fall in the pan. Okay. And, you know, roughly half. It doesn't have to be exactly half of the mixture. But you want enough, I guess, to make a quote-unquote pancake that you can basically press out to the edges. I think that's probably pretty good, actually, right there. Um, so now... We are going to put the lid on this and we're going to cook it for three minutes. So three minutes and you're just supposed to, uh, to just let it go, let it sit there. You're supposed to lower the heat, so I'm going to lower the heat right now and then let it cook for three minutes. And then we'll kind of peek underneath there and see what it's, what it's looking like. Having everything prepped and measured beforehand really helps. I imagine so. I try to take that lesson from, uh, I've watched Alton Brown, Good Eats, uh, for years. And he really drives home the importance of having mise en place so everything is prepped. And you'll notice I kind of did that here with what I had today, uh, partly because it makes things easier as you go through the recipe, but also partly because it uh, saves a little bit of time and it doesn't make things take longer and thus be more boring for you who are subjecting yourself to watching me fumble my way through this. Okay, we got about two minutes left on there. So the, the other thing There's another ingredient she uses that I didn't, and it's basically this powdered like seaweed that you can sprinkle on the top after it's done. Not a big fan of seaweed, uh, nori, I guess it's called, and I don't, uh, yeah, I'd, as much as I like salty things, I'm not about that. Where'd my tea go? Mm. Still warm because this is an amazing cup. Uh, mug. I got this from David's Tea, and it's double walled. And even though this has been sitting there since I started the live stream, my tea is still hot, which is good. All cooks started where you are, even Alton Brown and Gordon Ramsay. Do you think Gordon Ramsay cussed as much when he was a new chef as he does now? Do you think he learned that from his instructors wherever he, he went to school? being a chef. I can't imagine a mild-mannered Gordon Ramsay. I'm trying. I'm trying to picture it. 
I can't do it. <laughs> it just wouldn't be him, right? Because <laughs> freaking Gordon Ramsay. All right, we've got 25 seconds. Thank you for hanging in there with me. And then uh, we're going <laughs> to... This is the, the other part that's going to be fun, trying to flip this whole thing and keep it in, in one piece. All right, here we go. Counting down. So, whoops, wrong camera. Here we go. Two, one. Okay. Let's move that. All right. Let's, uh, and we're not going to need the lid going forward, so I can move this off to the side. He's really sweet and patient with kids. He embarrasses his kids on the regular, like all good parents probably do. All right. Um, uh, man, <laughs> this is not feeling like it's sticking together. Um, come on. Nope, it's really not sticking together that well. Okay, well, yeah. <laughs> okay, it's not quite done, I think, is the problem. So I'm going to keep the heat on low. I'm going to try, I'm going to let it cook down just a little bit longer. Because, yeah, it's definitely not sticking together. I, like I said, I feel almost like, I, and I did, I followed the recipe that she that she outlined on her channel, but it really feels like there was not enough but, uh, batter and maybe too much cabbage. I don't know. It's weird. I'm not sure what might be going wrong here at this exact moment in time. I don't want the heat to be too low, obviously, because then it's not going to cook at all. It's just going to be a weird coleslaw. No, that's not even fried. Do they make extra wide spatulas for when you're trying to flip stuff like in a pan like this that's big and takes up the whole pan? Because if they don't, maybe I should look into making that for newbies like myself. Maybe. Maybe, maybe that would be a good invention to patent. Okay. Um, getting there. This is now <laughs> looking less like a pancake and more like an omelet of some sort. And you know what? I'm going to be fine with that anyway. So you're supposed to flip it and then you're supposed to cook for an additional three minutes unlidded. So I'll, I'll go ahead and play the game and, uh, Three minutes. We'll see. And I really am actively using uh, my nose to detect if uh, things are burning or not. It doesn't seem to be. It doesn't smell burnt. And you can see it looks a little crispy in parts. Uh, I have a feeling this is going to taste amazing anyway, just because of the sauces that you're putting on top of this. Really, uh, if I'm perfectly honest, this is a delivery system, I think, for the omino, omenaki, omen, blah, 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 okonomi sauce, and the Japanese mayo, more so than it is about the, the cabbage. Although, don't get me wrong, I like cabbage. But, uh, in much the same way that we all know cake is just a delivery system for frosting, that's what I think this is going to be. Wilton, the really big spatula. And Michael sells ones that are six inches wide. Okay, good to know. I'm sad that I won't be able to make any money off this idea, but good to know that they're there. We love Wilton stuff, too. Um, Karina has really gotten into baking over the years, and whenever I would buy her stuff for that, we always 
go with Wilton stuff because it just seems to be ubiquitous. It's everywhere and it really seems well made and thoughtfully designed as opposed to some others <clears throat> out there. Okay, we're getting close. It says it needs one more minute, but it's already been on there for a bit. So let me, ah. <laughs> come on. Oh, sorry, camera. All right. Maybe, 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 no, <laughs> God. All right, I am failing everywhere at this. I don't think I'm going to get a cohesive pancake out of this. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna follow the directions. It's supposed to go for two more minutes, two more minutes, and then I'm gonna take it out of the pan. I'm going to put it on a plate and we're going to put the sauce on there and see what it tastes like. I don't feel sad about this. I think uh, this is fine. I guess this is how we learn, right? I'll just have to try this, uh, try this again in the future. Try to figure out where I went wrong. If maybe, I mean, you guys watched me mix the, the batter. Did I maybe not mix it together long enough? Um, it really just feels to me like there wasn't enough batter for the amount of cabbage. So yeah, I don't know. We'll see. We will see what happens. Okay, we've got a minute left. It's good here. And that's the other thing. I'm trying... <laughs> And it probably, okay, it's probably easier when you're not trying to do it live in front of an audience. Um, but working clean, which every single TV chef I've ever watched has, has harped on, got to work clean, got to have a clean station. We just finished watching uh, an old season of Worst Cooks in America and Ann Burrell and, uh, and Tyler Florence really, really have a thing about their, their chefs having clean stations. Man, they're, they just get into it. It looked well coated. Maybe the cabbage soaked up some of it. Yeah, maybe the cabbage soaked up uh, more than I was expecting. It could be. All right, we're down to 15 seconds and then uh, we'll go ahead and move this off to a plate. All right. For better or for worse. Here we go. And uh, supposed to be able to just slide it out. Yeah, slide it. <laughs> I'm glad you guys can't see this actually. Um, okay. Good enough. Turn the heat off. Let's go back over to the prep area. And uh, let's go ahead and zoom in the camera a little bit here. For what I can find on the internet, you didn't have enough batter. I'm thinking there may have been a typo in your original recipe. Um, yeah, I'm thinking, and because she just kind of walks you through the recipe. Uh, it wasn't actually written out. It's just kind of her adaptation of a traditional okonomiyaki recipe. Um, not so much sliding, <laughs> and you've invented a new dish. It really does look like coleslaw. I agree. That's okay. Um, I think it's still going to taste good. so with that being said, let's, uh, <laughs> okay, let's try this. So, I <clears throat> so the order of operations, excuse me, I have a <clears throat> tickle on my throat now. The order of operations for this is to put the Okonomi sauce over it. So you're just supposed to drizzle it. Nah. 
over the quote unquote pancake. And oh my gosh, that smells amazing. Oh, I wish you could smell this. And then uh, follow it up with a QP mayo, which again is the perfect combo of mayonnaise and, uh, and Miracle Whip. It really is. It is the perfect bastard child of those two things. And then you're supposed to, oh my gosh, I wish you could smell this. This is amazing. And now if this had actually turned out flat as a pancake, what you're supposed to be able to do is uh, take the back of a knife or something and just kind of <laughs> draw it through there, you know, to make the fun little <laughs> design. But of course, it's not going to do that because it's not really a pancake at this point. But, you know, all things considered, it's, uh, it's cabbage, it's cooked, it's not soggy, and it's got delicious sauces on it. So it's probably going to taste fine. I really do think it's going to taste much better than it looks, but we will see. Okay, we're about to find out. Thank you, looks yummy. We're about to find out. So, it smells amazing, that mayo. Oh, that mayo. I'm gonna put Japanese mayo on everything from now on. It's very hot, as in temperature hot. <laughs> okay. All right, first of all, the cabbage is actually cooked really well. It's not soggy. Uh, but it's not still raw, so it's, it's cooked fine. Mm. That bite, I got uh, a piece of the pickled ginger. It's really good, and surprisingly, I can taste the sesame oil. Even though we didn't use that much, it's definitely there. Um, it's kind of like on the, on the back end after you've <clears throat> swallowed it and then it just kind of bing you feel that a little bit i would say i could have gone heavier on the garlic and the uh, the onion powder because i i'm tasting a little bit of garlic i i really think i love garlic though so maybe that's just me but i think i, I should have used a little more The, uh, I'm never going to remember this name, I'm so bad. The Okonomi sauce. If I was to attempt to describe this for you, it, uh, let me taste them just by itself. Okay, if, if you were to take if you were to start making a barbecue sauce, <clears throat> excuse me, barbecue sauce, and then took a detour somehow and started making um, sweet and sour sauce that you would put on, you know, Chinese food when you go out for Chinese food. If you were to marry those two things together, I think that's a pretty good description of what this tastes like. It's got the smokiness of the barbecue sauce and it's got the sweetness and the uh, tanginess, almost fruitiness of the sweet and sour sauce, the red stuff that you would, you know, put on your sweet and sour pork. Uh, so you can imagine how good that would be with the, the, the mayonnaise, the Japanese mayo, that again itself tastes like the perfect combination of mayonnaise and Miracle Whip. because you still get the mayo taste, it's still clearly mayonnaise, but it has that sweetness and that uh, tanginess of Miracle Whip, but it doesn't hit you over the head with it like regular Miracle Whip does. It's great. I like this. <clears throat> I'm gonna keep trying this until I get it right. Um, 
I think this is worth it. You guys should try it. Um, I linked to the video that I that was the inspiration for this that Sharla posted on her on her YouTube channel, and you can go there and watch it and let me know because I just basically I wrote out the recipe as she was describing it as she was making it. So maybe I just wrote something down uh, wrong, which I totally would admit to if I did. That's fine. Um, but like I said at the beginning of the show, there are a lot of recipes for okonomiyaki. So maybe I'll, I'll try, I'll fiddle around with some of those other recipes and see what I can come up with. But yeah, that's it. Um, this is a tasty dish. Uh, I realize now that I didn't put links uh, for all of the ingredients. I bought uh, all of them online. So I will do that um, later this afternoon. You'll be able to see those and they all just go to Amazon. Um, but yeah, it's it's good. I, if you like cabbage anyway, right? You like coleslaw, you like <clears throat> savory applications like this, you like the flavor of uh, Chinese food, Japanese food, Cantonese, I try it. I really think you're gonna like this. And I really think once you have tasted the, the Japanese mayo, you are, you're gonna wanna use it in a lot of applications. So. so that's it, I appreciate it. Thank you all for being here today. I really appreciate you spending time with me. This was fun, I love doing this. Um, if you had fun today, do the usual like and subscribe, whether you're on Facebook or YouTube, share the video with your friends. And uh, yeah, I will see you guys on Monday at 9.30 a.m. Pacific again for another episode. And I'm gonna try to get better about posting in advance of what, um, what meals I'm going to be trying coming up, you know, just kind of teasing them out a little bit more so you have more of an idea of what to expect. But yeah, that's it. Take care, <clears throat> excuse me, take care of yourselves. Stay safe. Be kind to yourself. Be kind to each other. Uh, it's a weird time, but we're going to get through it. It's going to be fine. Love you guys. Take care, and uh, I will see you all on Monday. Have a great weekend, and uh, and thank you. And, and thank you very much for, for being here. All right. Bye.